Throughout this video, I'm gonna teach you absolutely everything there is to know about integrating OpenAI's text generation model directly inside of your own bubble app. In my example today, I'm gonna to build a revolutionary app that pushes the limits of AI. That's right, we're gonna build an app that writes love letters for your significant other. Absolutely genius, I know. Look along the way, I'm gonna explain these step-by-step -step instructions you need to follow when integrating OpenAI's completions API. Now look, within this video, you don't need to know how to code. So please don't stress if you don't have any experience with APIs. It's my job today to make things as easy as possible so you can follow along. Now look, there's just so much that I wanna cover within this video. So let's grab our bubble editor and we can dive right into it. When it comes to our tutorial today, what I've done is I've created a checklist of all of the individual items that we're gonna be adding into our bubble editor. Now, this is just something that I like to do for every build that I create, as it just allows me to easily follow along all of these steps that I need to add. Now, of course, I'll be sure to include a link to this particular checklist in the description of this video, so that way you can create a copy of this and follow along with me. For my checklist, I just use a tool called Notion. It's just a note-taking tool that allows you to check items off. But before we jump into anything that we need to build out inside of Bubble, what I'd love to do is show you a quick demo of the exact product we're gonna be building today. So if I jump over into a separate browser of mine here, I'm so excited to introduce to you my brand new startup, Lover AI. Our goal here at Lover AI is to disrupt the love note market. So why on earth would someone write a love letter to their partner by hand? That is so 2022. What we're gonna to do today is create a revolutionary way to have AI create a love letter for you in the matter of seconds. So all we need to do is add in the name of our partner. Let's say my partner's name is Lucy and our anniversary is, let's go with September 14th, 2023. And then when it comes to my favorite qualities about Lucy, I'm just gonna paste in some options that I've created here. I'm gonna say Lucy is caring. She has a great sense of humor. She's compassionate and she has a plump bubble butt. Look, I'm gonna keep it cheeky. What I'm gonna then do is select her, write this love letter. It's gonna send that through to OpenAI and it's going to generate a limerick poem for us. And look, let me tell you, this is straight fire. Let's just get a little taste of what it's created. There once was a girl named Lucy whose love for me was so juicy. Her caring ways, her humorous plays made my heart feel oh so floozy. Now look, I just have to say, if you're not a believer in AI, surely this is enough to convert you over to the dark side. So as you can see, we've created this application here today, but look, regardless of whatever type of app or scenario you're building for, what I'm gonna teach you can be applied across any different use case. So let's get started by jumping back into my main checklist here. And after showing you a quick demo of my product, we can now build out the connection between Bubble and OpenAI. And if I can be honest, this is where most of the hard work is throughout our tutorial today. Particularly if you are relatively new to Bubble or you've never built out an API connection, this can seem quite overwhelming. And trust me, I completely understand. I was there myself once too. When I used to think about connecting APIs, the first thing that would pop into my mind is code. And of course, creating code is the enemy to any Bubble developer, but I'm here to assure you that it is not. Thankfully, the process of integrating the OpenAI API is super straightforward and simple. In fact, in my opinion, you don't even need to know how to code to be able to do it because it is truly that easy. And look, it's my job to make it as simple as possible for you. So the first thing we're gonna do is jump into Bubble. Now I've already pre-built out this page here and I'll show you how that's built out in a moment. But what I'm interested in doing right now is jumping over to my plugins tab and installing the plugin that allows me to create an API connection. Now an API also, I should say, if you're not familiar with the term, is just a way of connecting two different services together. So if you've got your Bubble app over here and OpenAI on the other side, an API would connect these two platforms and allow you to send and receive data between them, which is exactly what we want to do. We want to send a prompt from our Bubble app through to OpenAI. We want it to generate some text and then send that text back through to our Bubble app. So in order to do that, we need to create that API connection. So let's add a plugin here. And the plugin we're going to add is the API connector, which is the first plugin at my list. And of course, this is a free plugin built by Bubble. We're gonna to choose to install that. I can then close this library and we're now going to add our first API. So your API here is the name of the service that you wanna to connect to. And in this case, it's going to be OpenAI. So this is the overall service, not the specific API call. And for instance, the API call today is gonna be referencing their text generator. 
Now that's gonna sit inside of this overall service. Now, when you're creating your first API, what you need to do is create some sort of way to authenticate that. And what do I mean? When it comes to connecting services with APIs, you need to generate what's known as an API key, which as the name would suggest, is literally like having a key that opens a door between our two platforms. So let's say there's a door in the middle, we've got a key, we're gonna open that up, and it will allow you to communicate between both of your services. It's essentially just a way of bubble verifying your OpenAI account and your OpenAI account verifying your bubble account. And so how can we do this? Back inside of my checklist here, you'll see that I've included a link to the OpenAI documentation. So if we click on this link, it's gonna take us through to a page which highlights everything we need to connect today. And you don't need to worry about any of this here. We're not gonna focus on that right now. Instead, what I want you to do is create your own OpenAI account if you have not already. If you have, what you can then do is head over to the left-hand menu and select on the API keys. Now, as you'll see, I've already created a bunch of different API keys for some previous tutorials that I've built out. But if you don't have an API key, what you'll need to do is create a brand new secret key of your own. And you can call this whatever you want. Today, I'm just gonna call mine text generator tutorial, and then I'm gonna to choose to create this. You'll then need to make a copy of your API key, jump back into Bubble, and when it comes to this authentication here, what you'll need to do is open up this drop-down menu and select the private key in header option. Now, how do I know that I should select this? That's a great question, and I'm glad you asked. If I was to jump back into my OpenAI account and then just quickly revert back to the documentation page that I'd mentioned before, this is where we can start to look at the code, I guess you could say, that's going to power our API call. Now, inside of this little code snippet, I can see a bunch of different information. And look, please don't stress if you don't know how to read this, I'm gonna explain it to you in plain English. But there is one key bit of information that I can see at the top here. Next to this little H, which is known as a header, you can see that there's a field here known as the authorization. So that is how I know that the authorization is in the header. And look, most API keys follow this exact same practice. So it was pretty straightforward to understand how we needed that. So if we jump back into Bubble, I'm gonna select that the private key is in the header. And as you'll now see, Bubble's automatically gonna populate this key name with the word authorization, which is the same value that we have right here. Perfect. All we now need to do is copy across our API key. And as you can see, OpenAI has added in some dummy text where it recommends you need to add in your own API key. So what you actually need to do is highlight the word bearer as well as this dummy text. So the word bearer essentially just means that you are the person who bears this API key, you are the owner of it. So we're gonna copy this across, jump into bubble, and we're gonna paste this into the value field here. Now you will need to paste this exactly how it's spelt in OpenAI's documentation. So the word bearer should have a capital B and there should be a space behind this before you then add in your own API key. Now, once again, it is pretty standard for API keys to require you to add in the word bearer and the space. So this isn't anything new or revolutionary. It's just a pretty common practice. What we now need to do though is highlight from the dollar symbol onwards and that's where you need to paste in your own API key. So I'm gonna paste in my OpenAI key there and just like that, we've now authenticated a connection between Bubble and our very own OpenAI account. If we jump back over into my checklist, what we can actually do is tick off that we finished installing the API, we created our first API service, we then generated our OpenAI key, and we are now reviewing the documentation. So the next thing we need to do on our list is create our very first API call. So the call, as the name would suggest, is going to send a message from Bubble through to our OpenAI account, and it's just gonna send with it some information, which is going to be like a request. So it's essentially picking up the phone and calling OpenAI and saying, hey, here's a prompt, can you please turn this into more text? And so if we jump back into Bubble here and scroll on down, inside of our overall API, you'll see the option to add in your first API call. So if we click expand here, you can customize the name of this call to whatever you would like. I'm gonna call this my text generator. And when it comes to this call, we need to make a few minor tweaks to all of the settings here. So the way we're gonna use this API call is actually as an action, not data. And what on earth is the difference between these two options? When you're working with APIs, you're most likely gonna to want to pull information from a service or send information to a service. So a great example of the first scenario is if you're building something like a stock trading platform, you might wanna use a third-party service that provides real-time values of stock prices. 
And so in that case, you're pulling data into your application. So that's when you would use the data option. However, today we're gonna to be sending data through to OpenAI. We're gonna be sending through a prompt and we're also gonna be telling it which OpenAI service we'd like to use. So in this case, it's text generator. So that's going to be an action and that will allow us to reference this within a workflow. When it comes to the data type, we're just gonna leave this as the standard JSON option, which is essentially just a fancy way of saying that we can format some of the text we're gonna send through. And then for the actual way we're gonna use this API, it's going to be a post, because as I mentioned before, similar to an action, we're going to be posting information somewhere. But where on earth are we going to be posting that information? So if you use the types in a prompt, we need to be able to send that to OpenAI's service. But where on earth does that service live on the internet? It's kind of just like if you were to send a letter to OpenAI's head office, you would need their address. And thankfully that address has been provided inside of the API documentation. So at the top of our API here, you can see the URL for the completions API. And that's the text generator that I'm gonna to use today. So we're gonna copy that URL, jump back into bubble and paste this into this field. And that is all you'll need to change. The only other thing we'll need to do here though is just add an additional header. And the reason for that is because if I jump back over to my documentation, remember how I mentioned there was the header for the authorization? I can see there's another header here for the content type. So this just confirms what type of information we're sending through to OpenAI. And in this case, it's just gonna be application JSON. So what we're gonna do is actually copy across the word content type. We'll jump back into bubble. We're gonna add a header and we're gonna paste this in as the key. Then for the value, we're gonna copy across the application JSON text, copy that and paste this into the value field. Now I've previously seen scenarios where some people will add the header value in the actual overall API key. But as you can see here, you would be adding that as a shared header. So what does that mean? Inside of our overall OpenAI API, you're not just limited to adding one particular service. So we're using the completions API, which is the text generator. But what happens if we also want to use Dolly for the image generation or Whisper for the speech creation? If you wanted to add more than one service or more than one API call, you have the ability to do that by adding additional calls. And if you were to set the content type as a shared header, that means that every single service inside of your overall API will share that exact same value. And look, that is not true. You don't want that to be the case. If you do just have one API call inside of your overall API, that's fine. But when you've got multiple different services that store data in multiple different ways, you're gonna run into an issue. And a great example is if you were to use the Whisper API. When you're creating audio files, you don't use JSON, you use a file. So that's why I personally just like to add the content type as an individual header for each individual API call. And something else I should point out is that when it comes to this header, I'm gonna make sure that this is still ticked as private, which just means that we won't be able to change that within our workflows. And that's completely fine with me. I will always want it to be this exact value here. And that is the very last thing we need to build out for our header. And from here, we can scroll on down to the fun part in my opinion. So if we jump over to the documentation, this is where we can copy and paste across all of the additional value within this API call. And so this is all the juicy stuff that's gonna power this API call. And these are known as your parameters. And so a parameter is just a fancy way of saying it's a piece of information that you wanna send through. It's kind of like how you use URL parameters inside of Bubble. What you'll find is you have your parameter key and then you have a value for that. So I can see there's three parameters. First of all, there is the model we're gonna use. In my tutorial today, we're just gonna be using the GPT 3.5 Turbo. The reason I'm using this is because I know this is the free version. So if you don't have a paid account, you'll still be able to follow along. Of course, if you wanted to use the GPT-4 model, you could just replace 3.5 with four. But then I can also see that there's a parameter for the message. And this of course is where we're gonna be able to type in our prompt. And then there is the temperature, which is essentially just the accuracy of the model. So what we need to do is select from the open bracket here and highlight all the way down to the close bracket. We're gonna then make a copy of this. We'll jump back into bubble and we're going to paste this in to our parameters field. So this is the actual JSON of the API request. And at this point in time, after pasting that in, you would have a successful API call. The only problem is, is that when you initiate this call, it's gonna send through this exact information here. 
Now, why is that a problem? Right now, this is all static text. And if there's one thing you probably learned from Bubble, it's the difference between static and dynamic data. This being static text is going to send through the exact same information for every single API call. So regardless of whatever prompt your user types in, it's always just gonna send this exact prompt here, which just asks the model to say that this is a test. Whereas what we wanna to do today is of course create a way for our users to be able to type in their own custom prompts. And so how can we do that? If you look above the input field here, Bubble allows you to create dynamic parameters or dynamic values, I should say. And the way you do this is by adding the less than and the greater than symbol and your dynamic value in between. So let's say for the prompt that I wanna send through, I want it to be dynamic. So I wanna constantly change it based on the prompt that a user types in. So in my love letter app, that would be the information about their partner's name, their anniversary date, and the features that they like about their partner. And so if I needed to create a dynamic value for my prompt, that is known as the content parameter. Now, how do I know that? Inside of my Notion checklist, I've also added a link here, which just outlines what every single parameter means in OpenAI's separate documentation. So if you scroll on down, you'll see parameters like the model, there's also the user parameter, and there's also things like the temperature which as it just describes, is a way for you to determine how finely tuned you want your model. Now, something I should also quickly point out for those people wanting to use GPT-4, not 3.5 Turbo, is that over in the right-hand side here, you can see another example of an API request. And right now you'll notice that this is linked to the 3.5 Turbo model, but what you can do is open this drop-down menu up and select whatever additional model you would like. So if you wanna use GPT-4, this is how you should format the value for the parameter of the model. And of course, you can just copy and paste that across and replace it with any of the existing values that we've added inside of our JSON text here. So I'd really recommend you take the time to read that documentation page as it is incredibly helpful to make sense of all of this information here inside of what looks like a little bit of a confusing code snippet. But I apologize because I've digressed. Back to my main goal here, I just wanna make sure that this prompt can be dynamic. So I'm gonna highlight all of the text inside of my quotation marks. I'm gonna add a less than symbol and I'm gonna type in a name for my dynamic value. And I'm just gonna call this the prompt. I'll then add a greater than symbol. And what you'll see is when I click away, it's now created a dynamic value. So it's not only highlighted in green, but the key name for this is prompt. And when it comes to the value, I'll just need to add in a test value. So I can have something like, tell me a joke. Now for this dynamic parameter, you will need to unselect that this should be private. And what that's going to allow you to do is make changes to this in the workflow that we're about to create that sends this API through to OpenAI. Now for my tutorial today, this is the only dynamic parameter I'm gonna add in. But of course you can make dynamic parameters for things like the temperature or the role or even the model but I want all of those values to be the exact same. It's only the prompt that I wanna change. And you do even have the option of updating the temperature manually. So you could say, for instance, you want this to be 0.2, just so that way it's more accurate, but it will use more of your OpenAI tokens. So I'm just gonna leave mine at 0.7. I'm quite happy for that. Now look, after building out all of this JSON here, we're gonna initialize our API call. And if your API call is successful, you're gonna see this pop-up display and this is just going to map out all of the data that you're going to store when OpenAI sends text back to you. And look, I'm quite happy with all of the default settings here. So I'm gonna to choose to save this. One thing I should just point out though, is that if you see an error message telling you to add credits to your OpenAI account, what you need to do is just go into OpenAI, add in your billing details and purchase some OpenAI credits or tokens. When I'm recording my tutorials, I just add $10 on there. It just allows me to play around and tinker as much as I want. And I find that $10 is more than enough to do that. Now look, just like that, that is absolutely everything we need to cover when it comes to building out our actual API. So let's jump back into my Notion checklist and we can tick off that we've finished building out the API call itself, which is going to power our whole experience today. And from here, this is where the fun part begins. We can now review the way we've set up our app and then build out the workflow that's going to power this entire experience. So let's jump back into our bubble editor and in this case, I'm gonna open up my design tab. And this is where we can break down how I've built out the world's most revolutionary product known as Lover AI. Now, obviously your use case is probably gonna be different to mine today. Although I haven't actually put a pattern on Lover AI, 
I'm gonna assume that you're probably not gonna build an app like this yourself. You might be building something like a blogging platform and you wanna be able to generate text for people. But I think it's worth just highlighting how I built out my experience. So obviously on my page here, I have three different input fields. There's two text fields and look, these are just standard input fields. So I've got where you can add your partner's name and your favorite qualities about your partner. I then also have a date time picker, which of course just allows someone to select their anniversary date. There's nothing too special. But what we're gonna do is aggregate all of that information together and we're gonna send through a custom prompt to our model. And we're gonna do this whenever the right letter button is clicked. So let's choose to add a workflow. And within this workflow, it's actually pretty straightforward. All we need to do is select an action from our plugins menu. And as you can see, we can now reference our OpenAI text generator, which is referencing the completions API. And now from here, this is where we can type in our custom prompt. So in this case, I would tell OpenAI that it is, let's say a romantic novel writer, and I want it to create a poem about a particular person whose anniversary date is on a specific date and who possesses certain qualities. Now, one thing I find is that when you're typing lots of text into this field, it's a little hard to see everything you've written. So just a personal tip of mine is to insert dynamic data and just type in the word arbitrary text. And what that's gonna do is just allow you to have more space here to type in more text. And all of that value will essentially just be normal text. But I personally just like to build my prompt out using this way. And so in most use cases, what you'll find is that when you're sending a prompt through to OpenAI, you might just wanna paste across the user's text they've added themselves. But today, what I wanna do is explain to you how you can create a custom prompt. So for instance, if you wanna give GPT a particular persona that it needs to follow, or give it any additional information, it's just going to allow you to create a much better end result that you get back in comparison to if you were to just straight up send across the prompt that a user typed. And particularly in my example today, my information is actually stored across three different input fields. It's not just one input field. So I need to mash all of that together. So what I've done is I've created a bit of custom prompt and I'm just gonna paste the start of this in. So it starts by saying, you are an expert writer that specializes in writing quirky romantic limerick poems. Write a love letter in the form of a limerick poem for. And then from here, I wanna add the name of the person's partner. So I'm gonna insert dynamic data and I'm gonna scroll on down to my input fields and I'm gonna reference my input partner name, the value there. So if someone typed in the word Lucy, it would display the word Lucy. I'm then gonna click away, I'll add a space. Then from here, I'm gonna paste in the second part of my prompt. So it's gonna say write a limerick poem for their name about how much they mean to you. Ever since you met them on, and I'm now gonna add in their anniversary date. So I'm gonna insert dynamic data. I'm gonna reference my date time picker anniversary, its value. I'll then click back in, hit space. And actually I'm gonna delete that space because my next part of the prompt has a comma. So ever since you met them on the date, they've meant the world to you. Your favorite qualities about them are, then I'm gonna reference my input qualities, its value. And that is the very last bit of my prompt. So I'm gonna add a full stop for nice measure. And so this right here is my own custom prompt that's just going to create a much better end result. So you can add whatever you want into your own example today. Now at this point in time, this step in our workflow would run and it would send that data through to the completions API service. But one thing I really just need to point out is the way in which this text is going to be formatted. So if you remember inside of our documentation for this particular API call, we're storing this data as JSON. So JSON looks exactly like this, but JSON is very particular or pedantic, I should say, about the way in which you spell things like spaces or particular characters. So typically what people would do is they would select the more option after their prompt and they would type in the word JSON and choose to format this as JSON safe. And what that's going to ensure is that it will remove any unnecessary characters and make sure it's in a JSON readable format. But the problem with this is that another thing it does is add quotation marks at the front and the end of our prompt. So again, over in our documentation here, you can see that the prompt needs to be in quotation marks. So by formatting this as JSON, it's gonna automatically do that for you. But where the problem arises is that if we look back over in our plugins tab, we've already added quotations to this dynamic value. So if we format that as JSON safe, it's going to essentially add another round of quotation marks to it, which will then throw up an error message for you. 
Now look, it is best practice to add this format as JSON, but what I've just found is that if I add this in, I personally get an error message because OpenAI can't read it because it's got too many quotation marks. So I'm personally just going to remove this today. But if you find you don't get the error message when you run that, that is completely fine. But for me, I'm just gonna leave my prompt here. Now, after a prompt has been sent and OpenAI has sent back some text, what we need to do is obviously display that on my page. And the way I've done this back in my design tab is that I've added a hidden text element, which is going to be hidden by default. So this just says your love letter. And then what I've done is I've just created a custom state on my page, which is going to store some text in it. Now today, I'm not here to teach you about custom states. If you're not familiar with them, I do have a dedicated tutorial that explains it. But look, the quick TLDR version is that they're just a way of temporarily storing data on your page, not in your database. Because every single time we request a love letter, I personally don't want to create an entry in my database, but I will show you how we can do that in a moment. So what I've just done on my page is I've just opened up my element inspector and I've created a custom state called GPT response. And this is just a text value. It couldn't get simpler. Then over in my workflow tab, after we receive text back, I'm going to set the state of an element. That element will of course be my overall page and the custom state will be the GPT response. And for the value of this state, it needs to be text. So I'm going to reference the result of step one, which is where we had sent and received data from OpenAI. We'll then need to reference the choices field. And look, this is going to send this back as a list of text. So what I'm going to do is reference each item's message content. And then I'm just going to select the first item because in my use case today, there's only going to be one particular item. And that is the one poem that it's going to write. And just like that, that is exactly how you can build out the workflow to not only generate, but then also store data in a custom state. Look, if you wanted to store this in your database, so if you wanted to create a new thing, all you'd need to do is head to your data tab and pretty much replicate the exact same step that I've just shown you. So you create a thing, let's say you wanted to create a blog post and you wanted to store this as the body text. All you'd need to do is once again, just follow the exact same steps that I've shown you. So you'd reference the result of step one, the choices, each item's message content, and the first item there. And that is exactly how you could store that text in your database. But look, I'm gonna delete that because I don't need to store it in my database today. Instead, I'm happy to just keep it in my custom state. Let's run a preview of our model though and see how this is going to look and feel. Over in a preview of my app, what I'm going to do is just type in my partner's name. I'm going to say it's Lucy once again. I'm going to select our anniversary. It was pretty recent. Let's say it was December 14th. And I've changed my mind about my favorite qualities about Lucy. In fact, this time I like her smoky brown eyes, her buck teeth, and her great sense of humor. So what I'm going to do is choose to write a letter here. It's obviously going to send that request through to OpenAI. It's going to run that completions model through that prompt and it's now going to return to us yet another straight fire poem. Let's scroll down and have a look. Oh Lucy, with eyes like smoke in the night and teeth that just make my heart take flight. Your humor's so grand, I'm forever your fan. Since we met, you've been my delight. And look, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever spend a Valentine's Day alone again, you truly have no one else to blame but yourself. Because today I've taught you how to create possibly the best secret weapon to the whole dating game in the world, and that is my greatest creation, Lover AI. From here though, what I wanna do is just jump back into my Notion checklist and tick off that I finished showing you how I designed this application and of course, how I built out the workflows to make the entire thing functional. And just like that, you now know how to integrate OpenAI's text generation model directly within your own bubble app. As you can see, the whole process wasn't too complex. It wasn't anything that we couldn't handle inside a bubble. Although we've only scratched the surface of what's possible, I think this will give you a great understanding of how you can start to build on top of OpenAI services. If you wanted to stay up to date with any additional bubble resources I share, I'd always recommend hitting that subscribe button on my channel, so that way you can be the first to know whenever I drop a new video. For now though, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for taking the time to watch this specific tutorial, and I wish you all of the best on your own no-code journey.